It was the 12 pubs last night. For anyone that isn't aware of my tiny Yorkshire town, it has very little to it. It has a castle and a river and 14 pubs squeezed into its cobbled streets. So naturally, some absolute genius in the 90s invented the 12 pubs of Christmas. A sacred event that takes place every year and everyone goes. And I mean everyone. I always bump into my dad's posty mate, so I have to act totally normal in front of ex-teachers. It is an event that even now, at the ripe old age of 23, I refuse to miss. My town also has another weird Christmas tradition on Christmas Eve, where prominent members of the town council dress up as creepy folk men, except for one who is wearing a black cloak with a horse's skull, and they walk around with tambourines pretending to beat the horse to death. We just sort of plod on with our hangovers and accept this weird display of animal cruelty, picking up our turkeys and don't question it. A bit weird, really. My first 12 pubs, Q, Jess and me, armed with two pictures from Spoon for £12 and a bottle of rosé. We made sure our laughter could be heard from the other side of the room. We spoke about what we wanted after college, shared fears about the fact we didn't know who we were yet. Normally, this, this fear of who I was would be enough to topple me. But with Jess, the person who I'd loved for my whole life, the greatest love I will ever feel, it felt reassuring. Like our words shared were small hugs and robing each other. We danced and ran through the marketplace hand in hand. Until the rosé pitcher mix bubbled inside me and I threw up in an ice bucket. Jess took me home and we disposed of the vomit filled ice bucket in a recycling bin. Only for dad to find it on early Christmas Eve morning and have to spend the rest of the day cleaning out pink vomit from a bin. The ice bucket had upturned, spilling out the puke everywhere. He was not best chuffed. I mean, if anyone at this point would like the recipe to make a very own pink vomit, it is one sex on the beach from spoons, preferably one that's sort of sunset-like in colour. One woo-woo, sparkly and purple, get that fizz going in the belly. And one bottle of rosé wine, preferably one that tastes like battery acid when it makes its way back up. New Year came and I snuck out to a party. I'd been grounded after the ice bucket vomit incident. Luckily, being an only child meant I had my parents wrapped around my little finger. And after some convincing, they let me go, thinking it was a civilised dinner at a friend's house. It wasn't. It was a shot-filled Jaeger extravaganza, where after four shots, because I'm a lightweight, I cried in a cupboard with a friend saying how everyone hated me. <laughs> he thought everyone hated him too. Maybe being a teenager is just you thinking everyone hates you. We danced and we all hugged when the countdown started. It felt nice. And I realised it didn't matter. It truly didn't matter. The people around me right now, my parents, Jess, my mates, they all loved me for who I was. They loved me for the weird limbo person that I was and they loved me even though I was still trying to figure out who me was. As I figured myself out, I started listening to indie music, wearing old lady jumpers from the charity shop and even took up yoga. You know, the holy trinity of figuring yourself out. I got a boyfriend who lit candles and would play vinyls and sweep me up into his arms. The new boyfriend thing though now meant being grown up and choosing contraception. Luckily, I was a lot more versed in this than I was on the matter of my own anatomy or on my pubic care, due to my auntie being a family planner. I knew there were countless options, it was just a matter of which one to go for, like a less fun lucky dip. Because if you choose wrong, instead of pulling out a toy dinosaur when you really wanted the slime, you'll get endless periods instead of stopping them. I opted for the implant first. My friend had been on it for years and I knew loads of people who had it. Unfortunately, as I learned the hard way, popularity isn't something you should choose your, ba your contraceptive choice off of. I got endless periods. And I mean 
endless. I would wake up in pools of blood that had run from my pad to my bedroom floor. So, the doctor, the lovely male, non-vagina owning doctor, decided to put me on the pill as well as the implant. For anyone that doesn't own a vagina or who has never been on any form of contraception before, let me tell you, being on two different forms, pumping through your bloodstream at the same time is a ride. And not the good kind, the sort where you immediately know you're gonna cry, cry and vomit and it was horrendous. At the time, I just thought it was the stress of A-levels or months of slut shaming or being 17. I stopped caring about anything. I stopped caring to a level where I didn't care if I was the one causing pain. I didn't care if I had a drama school to go to at the end of college. I didn't care that my parents were absolute angels. And honestly, I think the fact that Jess somehow managed to not punch me during the spiral of pharmaceutical induced twattishness just proves that she definitely deserves some sort of gold blue, gold blue Peter bad for friendship. Actually, on that note, maybe it's not too late to still write to Matt Baker. I messed up a lot during that time. I took the advice of the wrong people and I left myself more heartbroken than when I found out Dan from Bastille was gay. That was a bad day. I wasn't me or any sort of version of me I ever want to revisit. Why was I told that contraception can cause migraines and weight gain, but not the impact it would have on my brain? Why wasn't I told that having double the estrogen levels was not the best idea? And why only at the age of 23, having had endless girly wine nights sharing stories, am I realizing that this isn't just a me thing? <laughs>